Did you know that by optimizing your health and well-being, you not only feel great, get more done, think more clearly, and you also will be more likely to access creativity and intuitive wisdom that helps you to solve problems or to innovate or to make something better. And that's our topic today. I'd like to offer you some very simple tips in this short video about optimizing your well-being and continue a discussion. So again, we know that there are many practices that are essential, and you know this, to optimize health and well-being, from daily exercise to good nutrition to meditation to dealing with stress to your emotional stability and managing conflict in your life and, and resolving that. Well, let's add another one and take a look at how, it, how you can use it to solve problems. I'm reminded of this today, doing what I do every day, go for a nice 30 to 40 minute walk. It warmed up a bit, sun was shining brightly, and my intention was just to relax, enjoy the scenery, and in doing that, I found a whole stream of consciousness, ideas, project, related to projects I've been working on. So what's the takeaway? We've learned, we've all heard this, and perhaps you have too, that when you have what I call a goof off day, a day where you do nothing, no agenda, no to-do list, just a day for you, for self-care, to take it easy, to catch up with some movies, to go hiking, to go for a walk, to dance, to listen to your favorite music, anything that takes the pressure off. And interestingly enough, when you take the pressure off, what happens? Things that have been on your mind concerning you, often you get what? Ideas, insights. So what's the takeaway there? As you know, and I thank you by the way, and I acknowledge you, I know that it's not always easy. And one of the things I like to geek out about is intuition and accessing intuition and using and applying it to help ourselves, to help our family and friends, to help maybe make this world a better place to go beyond our rational thought. So it's interesting, I, how it relates to that is, is well, here, here's the tool, here's, here's the takeaway. First of all, taking the pressure off, you're reducing the distress. Going for a walk is one of the most effective ways to reduce and eliminate distress from the body. It promotes mental health and promotes physical health and well-being. And, I'm sure you know that you certainly heard this more than a few times, but what you also do is you put yourself in a position to get more into a flow state where you're more likely to have a stream of thoughts, ideas, a stream of consciousness that goes beyond your logic. So for example, if you follow my work, you know, if you follow me in the Silver Method, as you know, I've been nearly 50 years teaching the Silver Method program. Today we call it Life and Intuition System or the Immersion Experience. Uh, this has been something that I have been, it's just been so much a part of my life. And one of the workshops I created is called The Lost Sense or Intuition in You. And we talk about focusing principles. And one of them is to play, to, well, one of them is to play, to take the pressure off, and then another one would be to relax, however you do that. So what for you are some of the things you can do to take the pressure off? Maybe you like to dance. Maybe you like to zone out and, some, and get lost in some good music. Maybe you like to just go for a walk or a hike or go by the river, by the ocean. These are all things proven to help us chill out, relax, and be at ease. So here's the exercise. Here's a strong takeaway, take away, excuse me. If you've got a problem, a concern, a project, something you're working on, or you're stumbling, you're not quite sure what next step to take, or, or maybe you've got several choices to make and you're not sure which one is best for you. Do I go here? Do I go there? Something like that. You want to first be clear about your intention. Have a clear, specific mental representation not just of your health and well-being and what that means for you, how it feels, what it looks like. You want to have a clear mental representation of, of your vision. The, I'll say the outcome, the end result, more importantly though, the big picture. More importantly, the purpose, why you're doing it, what that big 
picture is, what you're aiming for, what, how you want to contribute, how you want to improve the quality of your life or others or add more service to your customers, your clients. So you want to have a clear mental representation of that ideal with you bringing your best self into the situation. And then you want to let it go. Let it germinate. Let it take root, so to speak. And the key is, if you try to force it, you block it. You just get stressed out more, and then you go into neediness. You go into fear-based thinking, and you're not going to think creatively, and you're going to access fear-based thinking rather than intuitive wisdom. In fact, some years ago when I was putting together the Intuition of You, the Lost Sense, the workshop for Jose Silva, who mentored me way back when, this is 1966, excuse me, 1986, as I remember. I get my dates straight, it's been so long. One of the things, in, in, um, excuse me, in looking at that was the idea of allowing things to germinate, to plant that seed, right, to have that thought. So I went to the dictionary and I looked up the definition of intuition. I wasn't even sure I was going to find it. And you could do the same thing, depending on the dictionary, but it went something like this. The act or faculty of knowing without that goes beyond the rational process, goes beyond logic. And it cannot be contrived, nor can it be forced. And that's been a challenge, my observation with a lot of my students, is that they attempt to force their intuition. You could read books, you could attend lectures, you could listen to great intuitives, and all of that will be inspiring, all that will be encouraging, but it's going to do nothing for you unless you actually practice it. And another takeaway I'd say is, it's a skill. Think of it as a skill, and the more you play with it, the more you pay attention to it, the more you exercise it, the more you activate it, the more it becomes a part of you, and it's just the way you are. And you don't have to say, okay, time to turn on my intuition. Whereas initially, for some people at first, I know that was true for me, it was an act of, okay, how do I access it? How can I turn it on? Once it's integrated and it becomes commonplace, it's just a flow, and that's part of what the flow state is with respect to intuition. So have a clear mental representation of the big picture, the why. Take off the pressure. So maybe you go for a shower, you take a hot bath, you go for a walk, you go hiking, you're listening to some music. You do something that takes your mind off of it. And under those conditions, you're more likely to what? Activate what will emerge from within you are ideas. So there's that germination process. You have the clear intention, what it is you want, and then you let it go. You can't force it. Just let it go, release it with the faith, with the confidence, with the conviction that you will be guided, that somehow, somewhere you'll access your intuition. So you keep that in mind and you let it go out of your conscious thoughts. It's like the idea of, let me sleep on it. I'm sure you've had the experience, you've heard it how many times? People say, well, let me sleep on that. And invariably wake up in the morning, we feel better because the subconscious went to work putting things into place and perspective. So have fun with this. It's a fun exercise. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ken Kasha. I serve as the lead instructor, international train director for the Silver Method, creator of the Lost Sense, Intuition in You. And I love this work. I thank you for letting me geek out about my favorite topic. And if you find this helpful, great. Share it with others. Do me a solid. Let people know. Share the video. Like, make some comments. I'd love to hear how you use your intuition. That'd be so cool. So thanks, guys, and have a great day. Until the next time.